Welcome to our channel. Today we are going to do some load testing to show you exactly what our two grow watt inverters can handle. So these are two 5 kilowatt inverters by GrowWatt. They are the 5000 ES US model sold by Signature Solar. We are still grid tied, but we utilize this like a generator and actually physically switch off the grid power and switch this on. That might seem old fashioned, but we wanted to keep things a little more simple here on our off-grid homestead. So we have 10 kilowatts of inverting power here and we have 8.8 .8 kilowatts of panels outside. We have 20 440 watt split cell panels made by Solar Ever. And then we have five EG4LL lithium iron phosphate batteries for a total of over 25,000 watt hours of backup. So it was in my plan to switch over my stove and my dryer and my water heater to propane. I've got a big propane tank outside, but I haven't done that yet. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to show you what big loads that solar system can handle. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna start at a base of all of our phantom loads in the house and every single light turned on and every single fan turned on. And I'm gonna keep that the same throughout all the testing. So as you can see here, we've got our lights on. Even though it's bright and sunny outside, we've got lights on, the entire house is on. We've got five laptops in the house currently charging and plugged in. We've got things like our electronic piano here that are plugged in and turned on. The TV's on. All tiny appliances like the electric toothbrush are plugged in and charging. Bedside lamps are on, ceiling fans are on, and if you can hear it, the bathroom exhaust fans are on. Now we still do not have our mini split systems hooked up, and I have an electric heat pump heater and air conditioning system. It's a three ton, and our system cannot run that. So for this test, we're gonna shut this off. We've got other appliances like cordless vacuums plugged in, and just for the heck of it, I plugged in all of the battery chargers in the house. I've got an extra freezer here in the house and of course our main refrigerator. And then I'm going to be playing with some big load kitchen appliances like an Instapot and an air fryer for you. I did the same type of testing the other day and I am extremely impressed with these. But let's show you what they can do. So first things first, these grow watts are on standby so I am going to turn both of them on. So it takes a second and then it will click over to feeding the house with AC power. You can see it uses just a fraction of what the inverter can handle. You can hear the fans kick on. Our midpoint transformer kicked on and we've got our emergency disconnect right here which is currently turned off. So I have two points where I can turn on our system. Let's first turn this on. Now we're in our closet with our main panel. So. For this system to turn it on, it's just like a generator. I actually have an interlock kit here for a generator that will go right here. I just have to put it on the panel. That will allow me to not have our main grid power on and our solar at the same time because we don't want to back feed into the grid. So this is our breaker. This is a 70 amp breaker for the solar system. I'm gonna flip off the main 200 amp breaker here and flip on the power for the solar system. Now we're on solar power. So the whole house is on solar right now. Every phantom load is still on, every light is still on, and every fan is still on. And as you can see, our batteries are all sitting at 100% and they're floating, so they are discharging and recharging, and they get down to maybe 98% uh, on the discharge, and then they float back up to 100%, but all of them are like that. So here's our master inverter. You can see it's using around seven to eight percent of its capacity for all of the phantom loads in the house, all of the inductive loads in fans, ceiling fans and uh, regular exhaust fans, and every single light in the house. This is the second inverter over here. You can see it's using about eight and a half percent, fluctuating eight to eight and a half percent. So now we're going to start turning on some high draw loads whether they be 240 loads or some high draw loads uh, that are 120, like our Instapot or air fryer, we're gonna see what we can run with every single light in the house and every phantom load and every fan on. Now you off-gridders out there know that you're never gonna have all these loads that I'm gonna turn on at the exact same time, nor should you. 
you should be smart about how you use your solar system. But I'm going to push this a little bit and see how far I can take it. Now, I just want to remind everyone that these grow out inverters, these 5000 ES inverters that I got from Signature Solar, who is an authorized dealer, are modified for our American grid. And they are modified at the manufacturer. But there are other GrowWatt 5000 ES models that are being imported that are not internally modified. And those could be dangerous. So only buy these from a reputable, authorized GrowWatt dealer. And these off-grid inverters have the ability to take AC into them. I'm not going to do that because I want them strictly to be off-grid. Even though they have that capability, the wiring is more complicated and I'm not going to get into that. It works perfectly the way it's set up for me. Quite possibly the biggest load that you can put on a system is an electric dryer. We still have ours, haven't switched it over to the propane. Let's see what it does to that inverter. Okay, so we have all of our baseline, all of our lights, all of our phantom loads, and all of our fans on in the house, and I just turned the dryer on, and we are hitting 57% on the master here, and 62% on the slave. So if you wanted to use an electric dryer, you can. Now if I was using the dryer and wanted to make something on the stove, let's turn one burner on and see what that does. So if you can see, this one's at about 70%, maybe a little bit over, 70.5%. And the one next to it, 75%. We've got our stove on with one burner and the dryer. That's amazing. So our dryer is done and we've got some cooking to do. So we still have our burner on making our tea on the stove. Let's kick on the oven and see what happens. All right, here we go. Oven's on and we are at 46% and 49%. We have the oven and one burner. That's pretty darn good. So say we're cooking, we've got our one burner on, we have our oven preheating and warming up, and we needed to melt butter in the microwave. Let's try that. We're gonna put this on for 30 seconds so I have time to get over to the inverter to show you. All right, back in here. That microwave draws a lot, but we're pushing 70% roughly on this one and 74% on that one. <laughs> this is unreal, this is pretty cool. Again, we still have our baseline, and we've got a 1500 watt air fryer, and we also have a 1000 watt Instapot right here. So I'm gonna kick on the Instapot to saute, so we can see that it's on there, right there, saute. We'll check with just the Instapot first, and then I will turn on that air fryer to see what happens. Okay, baseline plus Instapot, 19% and 21% over here. Let's hit the air fryer. Okay, they're both on at the same time. Let's check the inverters. Both of those appliances, 1500 watt appliance and 1000 watt appliance, and all phantom, all lights baseline is pulling 32%, about even actually on both of them. So 32 to 33%. Okay, I've shut down the cooking process and I've turned on the washing machine. Now, washing machine, really doesn't draw that much, but what it'll do is hopefully once it pushes all the hot water into it, it'll kick on my electric water heater and then we will see what happens with that. So we are just at baseline plus the washing machine and we are at about 11% and I'm gonna go run the hot water also in the bathroom to get that water heater to kick on at the same time and see what happens. So when I turned on the water in the shower, I saw the light flicker just for a second and I think that's when the element kicked on in the water heater. Yep, we're sitting at about 49% on this one, give or take, and 53% on this one over here. So as I mentioned, we're in the process of putting in a few mini splits, which draw way less energy and can be used with a solar system uh, really well. And they are very efficient. Our big three ton outside, I've turned it off for this entire test. And I know I told you that before, but we do have a window unit here that we did use as backup a little bit this summer. And I'm gonna kick this thing on, even though it's 40 degrees outside. I'm gonna kick this on and get the compressor to kick on and see what it does. There, I turned it down low enough. I heard the compressor kick on. Let's see what that does. So that window unit is a 10,000 BTU unit. And you can see we've just jumped up to 55% on this one and 58, 
58 and a half on this one over here. Yesterday when I tested it, I had the stove on with the window unit on and I was sitting at about 40%. But right now that water heater and the washing machine is on. So that's what we're getting for that combination. I am so excited at the performance of this system. Who's gonna turn everything on at the same time? Nobody. You know if you have solar, you gotta be smart about it. And these grow outs, two of them, just two of them, can handle it with no issue. So just to show you, it's not even drawing from the batteries. We're still within our, our float range here. We're at 97%, 97. Yep, they're all at 97%. And it's three o'clock in the afternoon in late January. So if you are strategic and smart about what you're using in your home, just this small system can run your house with no problem. So I probably am still going to take my stove and the dryer off of electricity and put them on propane. I have the tank outside and I like cooking on gas anyway. But even if I didn't, I would be able to run my whole house with no issue with just two of these inverters. And now that I am going to take those off, I will never have to worry about my power consumption with these. So even if I had an issue where one of these inverters went down, one is enough to power certain things in the house with no issue, especially having it as an off-grid backup for your freezers, your refrigerator, all your lights, and all of your phantom loads and things like that. If you're interested in any of the equipment I've used in this video, head below and click on the link to Signature Solar. We also have links in the description below to all of the equipment that we use on our entire solar project. If you have any questions about our testing today or what these inverters can do, leave me a question in the comment section below. And if you want to learn how to install the entire system yourself, go click on this series of videos right here, which shows you how to do everything. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.